and state of the game, lol please, League of Legends. Alright, so this should discuss the preseason. Now, no matter what, bro, it doesn't matter what they say or what they do. There is no way, not zero, no chance that the game gets as fucked as it did this preseason. There's no shot. So, how, dude, how bad could this really be? Can't be that bad. Hey, everyone. Hello, Jessica. Here. Good to see you again. Here on behalf of the league team, we have a lot to cover today, including our plans for preseason, challenges, and game modes. Yeah. But first, let's talk about the state of the game. Let's talk about it. Hey, right. complete failure. Support is an absolute disgusting, bonkers, bullshit role. Needs gutted. Period. I mean, honestly, other than that, I don't think it's too bad. Support's just fucking fucked. The items suck cock. Complete failure. You guys are lost. Overall, we're pretty happy with the state of league this season. Of course you are. But you know, I, dude, there, there hasn't been a year I, that I can remember that they've ever said, we're not happy with the way the season went. But before we get into the details, let's dive into a topic that's been pretty popular lately, which is new champion balance. Failure. When we look at the data, we actually see that new champion. Yeah, uh, I'm going to keep on pausing. This might take us an hour. Before she even speaks, complete failure. Every single champion they've dropped are pick and ban. Giga busted at start. They have to get they they and if they're not broken to sell, they hot fix buff them so they are broken. Then it's facts, bro. It's facts. Champ. And they will admit it. They make sure they're broken so they can sell the champions have been and it, it hey for RP because a lot of people that play, you dude, it takes so much blue essence to buy a champion. There's no shot you can ever save up to buy them. So they're forced to spend riot points. Pretty balanced on release this year, with the exception of Doctor Mundo. Huh? Champions have been pretty balanced on release this year, with the exception of Dr. Mundo. We actually see that new champions have been pretty balanced on release this year, with the exception of Dr. Mundo. What are they fucking talking about? Dude, Mundo, what do you mean? I, I'm not going to make it through this. We're 30 seconds in, I'm about to punch my monitor. Dr. Mundo was the most balanced drop you've had! He's been the most balanced rework you've done the whole time! I can't. Dude, I might just close this shit. We're, we're tw I'm 20, look at this, I'm 29 seconds into the fucking video, bro. I can't with this shit. What are you talking about? That said, there's more to healthy gameplay than just win rates. And we're still hearing that new champions feel unfair to play against, particularly when it comes to complex abilities or overloaded kits. Yes. If we're being completely honest, we don't think our champions have overloaded kits overall. But that being said, there have been times when we've given new champions too many overloaded kits overall. But uh, that being uh, said, there have been times uh, 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 uh. Honest, we don't think our champions have overloaded kids overall but hey no jessica hey jessica who hey there's somebody off camera say the fucking line jessica hey say the fucking line we believe our champion kits are not overloaded dude there i, I think she needs help bro there's no shot there's no shot bro but that being said, there have been times when we've given new champions too many tools and had to pull back later to give them more clear weaknesses. For example, Samira's ability to dash to allies was removed because it provided too much safety. Combined with her missile blocker, it made Z seeing her too difficult, especially since that's one of her main forms of counterplay. Another thing we consider when we hear a champion feels bad to play against is their intended complexity. We try to make a healthy mix of high, medium, and low complexity champions. In this way, whether you like mechanical skill expression, point and click simplicity, or something in between, there's a new champion that interests you. For example, with Vex, we wanted to create a champion that was fairly easy to pick up, and we're happy to see she's hitting that mark. I don't think but beyond just how complex a champion right. is to play, there's also how difficult they are to understand. We want new champions to have unique gameplay, but you shouldn't need a wiki to know how to play with or against them. Learning counterplay is a skill test we do think is important. But knowing what a champ Looks can or can't do shouldn't stupid. be a part of it. This clarity is something we haven't always hit the mark on, especially with champions like Aphilios, who not only has a complex kit, but was also lacking UI clarity when he was released. Designing new champions is a constant balance between making something that's exciting, has clear counterplay, and isn't the top confusing. Left? Gonna edit that out? We're still trying to find that line, but we want to get to a spot where new champions aren't just numerically balanced, 
but that you all feel they're fair to play against. That's not possible. Beyond new champion releases, this Why season this we've seen a wide variety of picks in every role. We've also seen a healthy improvement in diversity of playstyles across roles, especially in jungle and top lane. Some of this is due to direct champion changes, such as the kit adjustments that enable picks like Jungle Darius, yeah, Brand, yeah, Morgana, yeah, 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 yeah. You guys, new forces. items like no, 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 don't get it twisted. You, you've seen a diversity of champions in the jungle, jungle because you force that. You literally make the champions so broken they're forced to be played, right? Or the items like the Morgana buffs, like the Diana buffs in the jungle, right? Like the Rumble buffs, you buff these champions so much that they have to be, they're so broken, of course they're going to be played in the jungle, right? And secondly, let's, hey, I'm not done, and then those dropped off, and what'd you do then? You forced, you buffed Talon, Zed, and Kiana so much that they're, that if you don't pick them, they're, you're stupid. So it's forced diversity. It's not just, oh, it's a small pool of champions forced to jungle, at, like, S tier meta, it's, no, bro. Don't just, like, oh, we, these champs casually jungled. It's like three champs in rotation. Over and over again. Lilia, Hecarim, Udyr, Morgana, Diana, Rumble, Kiana, Talon, Zed. Like, champs that aren't supposed to jungle. Or that aren't, weren't junglers. Now, and then all the others. This change and Hullbreaker have also had a positive impact. Nobody builds Hullbreaker. Especially Hullbreaker. in top lane where we're seeing a ton Nobody. of champion diversity. Nobody builds Hullbreaker. And finally, we know that some champion classes have been struggling after the item system update. Tanks. And we've been working on some solutions to help them out. Tanks. Revert the items. This brings us to our plans. They're going to revert the items. With that, I'm going to hand things off to Brightmoon. We'll go. They're going to announce the reverting the items. Let's go. Hey, everyone. I'm Brightman, it's the lead you, producer Jeremy. of gameplay on League of Legends. There's a smiling motherfucker. League is like a house. Sometimes we need to do a big renovation to keep it working well, like when we overhauled the item system. And sometimes we just need to add some new furniture. It's like a house. The lead producer of gameplay on League of Legends. League is like a house. Sometimes we need to do a big renovation to keep it working well, like when we overhauled the item system. And and sometimes we That's just need true. to add some new furniture. Yeah, I for mean, this year's preseason, we're sprucing things up with improvements to our existing systems, like no. items, runes, no, remove and the elemental rift. Let's start with our plans for items. While some champions and classes have lots of build options, we've still got others that don't feel like they've got a mythic or legendary that so really speaks it. to them. So we're going to be adding some new items and tweaking some others. God. This it's will it. include two new mythic items. The first one is a support tank item, perfect for champions that want to get aggressive and charge into the middle of a fight. When you immobilize an enemy champion, all nearby enemies will take increased damage from your team for a short period of time. You added what? You're adding a new support mythic item. For fucking what? For fucking what, man? Because supports don't have the right item. Supports don't have enough items. Oh, there's not a... Oh, what are support players going to build? They can't build any good items. Oh, no. What a sorry-ass class. We got to we gotta make sure they uh get an item they can build. Bro, they can literally fucking close their eyes, scroll through the shop, and build random items. It doesn't matter. Their base stats are fucked. The second new mythic item is built for mages. To mobilize an enemy champion, all nearby enemies will take increased damage from your team for a short period of time. Okay, so if you immobilize and whatever, all enemies do more? Enemy champion, all nearby enemies will take increased damage from your team for a short period of time. Oh my god, so all nearby enemies will take increased damage from everybody. Time. I mean, what are the mythic item stats going to be, bro? I mean, it's not needed. It's supports don't need this, bro. The second new mythic item is built for mages. who are looking for a little more survivability. It grants damage reduction that lingers for a few seconds after you get hit. And while the protection holds, you'll also get ability haste. We think it'll be particularly good for longer range mages. We need a mythic that helps them survive a dive rather than pile on extra damage. I mean, whatever, but we they can just reduce system, the damage in want... general. I mean, this is like, like a cupcake fix. 
Like, if they could just reduce the damage in, in, in general. I mean, I don't really play assassins, so I don't really care. But, uh, they, I mean, what, what they could just do is make champs do less damage, not make a band-aid fix to just add the fucking whatever. I wanted to give every champion strategic choices in every game. We still think that's the right goal for mythics, but our thinking has changed when it comes to legendary items. We think it's okay if some champions build the same legendary in most games, if it's a perfect fit. But we also want you to have plenty of options, which is why we're improving legendaries for mages, assassins, and tanks. For example, assassins can look forward to a new legendary item that gives ability haste, and also refunds a portion of their ultimate's cooldown with enemy takedowns. So needed. Tanks that can never get enough mana will be happy with a new legendary item that grants bonus health based on total mana, and also burn some of it to create a shield whenever they immobilize an enemy. And finally, mages who are tired of being denied their hard-earned kills can rejoice. They'll be receiving a new legendary that grants magic pen against recently shielded enemies. So like, uh, for I like runes, that one, but uh, there's some good and they immobilize I mean, enemy. I like the last one. Mana, enough mana of their ultimate's cooldown with there's, enemy there, takedowns. Dude, there's not, it's not needed. And also refunds a portion of their oh, ultimate. Oh, it's so unneeded. Like you don't need the items. Like, but I really like, like you don't, it's not, assassins don't need anything else, bro. Assassins aren't even building assassin items. They're just building gore drinker. Like, like, so like eclipse and prowlers, nobody even builds anymore. It's all gore drinker, gore drinker, gore drinker, gore drinker, gore drinker, gore drinker. Cool down with enemy takedowns. Tanks that can never get enough mana will I don't be really happy care with a new legendary item it's not gonna be used that grants forever. bonus health based on total mana and also burns some this, of it to create a shield the whenever they immobilize an enemy. And finally, mages who are tired of being denied their hard-earned kills can rejoice. They'll be receiving a new legendary that grants magic pen against recently shielded enemy. Which I like that. It's like a fang. For mages. So all these games, I'm, ba I'm I'm building Fang on like Annie and Fizz and Karthus and all this shit. I can just build this. I, I like that. I like it. As for runes, we think there are some good targeted changes. We Revert the make. runes! Revert runes are forced! First of all, we feel the Inspiration Tree's identity has been pretty unclear. And we'd like to broaden its keystone They're use reverse. cases. For example, for we're reworking Glacial Augment to double down on its fantasy of slowing down enemies. We are also making some modifications to Lethal Tempo to lean into its attack speed fantasy and give it a more distinct use case in the Precision Tree. Up next are Bounties. Champion Bounties give teams who are behind a way to get back into the game without being a straight shot to victory. They're and this year, we're adding a second way for teams to try and make a comeback. Objective Bounties will work like Champion Bounties, except you cash them in by taking map objectives, like Towers or Baron. They ramp up slowly when the enemy team lead grows, and the bounty is shared with your whole team, regardless of who claimed it. Taking objectives really is the best way to come back when you're behind, so we want to help make that a clearer and more rewarding strategy. That said, if a team is really far ahead, objective bounties won't change that. Being the better team should always get you a win. I mean, so we'll be watching the new bounty system closely. Ah, uh, we'll see how this check. is. Finally, well, I mean, let's we'll talk see how that is. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm. Uh, we'll see. Uh, the the bounty system's so fucked, though, in general, because, for instance, bro, if I press tab, right, so let's say I'm playing Fizz, right, and I'm, like, four and one, and I have a 300 gold bounty, right, and my top laner's fucking 0 and 3, my bot lane's combined 1 and 6, and my jungle's, like, 0, 0. Obviously, they suck, and I'm gonna have to take some risks with my lead to get to to win the game to get us back into the game so i'm gonna have to take some unfavorable like trades or like windows that probably aren't gonna work but i gotta try or or we lose anyway right why should i be punished for trying that and giving the enemy team not 300 gold but like 600 gold it's fucked that's a huge problem Let's talk about our biggest addition this preseason dragons. We really like how spotted. each dragon creates unique terrain, grants yeah. powerful buffs, and adds more strategy dragon to Dragon changes were good. Let's so change this preseason, we're adding two more. Okay. Up first is the Hextech dragon. When your team defeats it, you'll all gain additional ability haste and an additional skin. Dude, watch this fuck shit. 
Hextech Dragon, you kill it, everybody in the game, their skin changes. So like from Goth Annie to Red Riding Annie. Whoa! Hextech Dragon. When your team defeats it, you'll all gain additional ability haste and attack speed. And if you claim the soul, you'll receive a chain slow that works kind of like Static Shiv's passive. When this dragon takes over the rift, it creates Hextech gates that can transport you to set locations across the map. What the fuck? The second dragon joining the party is what Hextech's darker fuck? stations across the map. I mean, the the dragon was whatever. Kind of like static. Like, I, I was like, okay. I mean, dragons are. I, I think the. I've said a hundred times. Right, the dragons were one of the best changes for. I like ever. Like one of their best presented changes. That they were really good. This pass. Plus the map change, awesome. That was an awesome idea. When that the the like passive on it is meh, whatever. When this dragon. But what the fuck is this? What does this mean? Take. So where are these taking you? It's over the rift. It creates Hextech gates that can transport you to set locations across the map. The second dragon joining the party... I don't know about that. I mean, I don't know about that. That probably... That's gonna be a little disgusting, I think, but... Hextech's darker sibling, the Chemtech Drake. When you slay it, your team will deal increased damage when your HP is low, letting you turn around those close team fights. This dragon soul provides a second chance at life. Well, sort of. <laughs> When you die, you'll enter a zombie state, where you can still cast abilities and continue fighting when you'd normally be looking at a gray screen. Mm -hmm. And when the Chemtech Dragon putrefies the map, it creates camouflage zones and fixed locations. Mm -hmm. uh, you normally be looking no at a zombie shot, a second bro. chance of life. Well, sort of. <laughs> when you die, you'll enter a zombie state, where you can still cast abilities and continue fighting when you'd normally be looking at a gray screen. Where you can still I don't know about this. this. <laughs> They're kind of trolling. You'll enter a zombie state where you can still cast ability. Let me think about this one. I I mean I don't know about this one. Continue. Okay, so if you cut, okay, if you die, okay, let's say you get the soul. Let's say you get the soul. Okay, so you got the soul. You lose a team fight. Okay, you hit the soul. You're fighting. What does it give? Lower health or more team damage fight. at lower health? This drag when your HP is low, letting you turn around. Those you slay it, your team will deal increased damage when your HP is low, letting you turn around those close teams. So does it? So you can like stack these, right? So you could get like three of these. So the lower HP, so you'll be doing so much damage in this. This dragon soul provides a second chance at life. Well, sort of. When you die, you'll enter a zombie state, where you can still cast abilities. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Continue fighting. I don't know. When I, don't, I don't know. Normally be I don't know. Looking at a gray screen. And when the Chemtech dragon putrefies the map, it creates camouflage zones. I hate that. I hate this. Fix locations. I don't like this. I like that. The, the GA better than this. I don't like this. I don't like anything that, like, the camouflage, the invis, the whatever they're called. I really don't like all that shit. These dragons might seem more impactful. Camouflage screen. And when the Chemtech dragon putrefies the map, it creates camouflage. But like I said, the dragon changes were the best preseason update they've ever done in the game. So I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Because when I watched that too, back in the day, I was like, what the fuck? No way. So we'll see, bro. We'll see. Our zones and fixed locations. These dragons might seem more impactful than the current ones. Yes. And well, they are. Our goal is to add more unique encounters and meaningful strategy to the mid and late game. That said, these are some pretty big changes and we're ready to adjust if they're making too much, too little of an impact. You can expect to see all of these changes on PBE in a couple of weeks, okay. and we'll be looking for your feedback in the months ahead. You don't even give a fuck about our goddamn feedback on the fucking PBE, you liar, Jeremy. You liar. You don't care about our PBE feedback. Outside of preseason, something we've heard from all of you is that you'd like more ways to express yourself and your achievements in League. For some of you, ranked is how you define your progress. True. And that's great. We don't want to change that. But for those of you who aren't focused on the rate climb, there aren't great ways to express your own progress. 
They're fucking casual. Period, Jeremy. Fuck those people. They're casual. If they don't play ranked, they don't deserve anything. End of story. Tell them to go fuck themselves, Jeremy. And I'll like the video. Champion Mastery and Eternals help you show off your skills on a particular champ. How many games they don't tell the story of your broader League legacy. The new challenges system should achieve just that. Challenges rank up over time, showcasing your increasing mastery and legacy across a bunch of different systems, modes, and gameplay, making it a little different than just a standard achievement. We want to highlight not just your rank in Champion Mastery, but also your inventiveness, breadth of play styles, aye, collection, aye, aye. No, everything No, that else this is between. cluster. This looks so bad. This is so clustery. It's not needed. This looks so mobile gamey, in my opinion. Yes. Breadth of play styles, collection, and everything else in between. I mean, that, this is for the hard casuals. Hard casuals. Like the ARAM only, the normals, which I guess they do make up the player base. But that looks so casual. Like, I mean, whatever. Want to showcase your knack for never dying in ARAM? Yeah. Or how great you are at killing minions in SR in the first 10 minutes? Maybe you've collected over 100 champions or love participating in events. All of this is now possible to track and display your progress with challenges. You'll get the first glimpse of challenges when they hit PBE next month, and the full system will launch early next year. Jeremy's just too smooth with his smile and his like lips, like his, like like the way his mouth moves when he talks. It's too it's like it's like it's like too smooth. Got a good smile though, Jeremy. Like it. That's all I have to share with you today. <laughs> dude, 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 he makes me want to smile. Like, I think that's why they fucking ha have him reading this. Because, like, I, I, I hate everything about it, but I'm, like, smiling because he's smiling. Fuck off, Jeremy. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Yeah, and yeah. safe locked again to talk about game modes. Woo, game modes! When it comes to game modes, one thing we've been hearing from you all is that you'd like more variety in the modes we bring back alongside events. So let's talk about it. To start, we actually agree that the existing rotation of game modes can make some of the most popular modes like Earth and One for All feel a bit stale. Some of you have asked why we just don't bring back some of our other what older game modes like Star Guardian Invasion or Ascension to mix things up. And the answer is that bringing back old modes isn't as easy as flipping a switch. League is constantly changing which means all of our existing modes require a constant upkeep. For example, when we released Yumi, we had to figure out how she'd function in one for all. What happens when a Yumi attaches to a Yumi who is attached to a Yumi? Because of upkeep like this, we have this to be very shit selective doing, about this the, this is the shit they're doing in their office. Guys, guys, get this, guys. Dude, okay, guys, guys, guys. Dude, they're so bored. They're so bored over there in that company. Like, holy fuck, bro. They're so bored just doing nothing. Like, guys, 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 yo, Tommy, Tom. Tom, Tommy, how crazy, dude, how about the, what if a Yumi attached to a Yumi, and those two attached to another Yumi, then attached to another Yumi, then attached to another Yumi? How's that sound, Tom? Like, dude, like, dude, these guys are just, they're so, dude, holy fuck. The modes we maintain. And right now, there are just too few popular modes that feel worth the investment compared to making so they make a game mode about it, bro. I can't. Ones for you. We've mentioned this before, but we think the sweet spot for game modes are ones that amplify champion fantasies and really build on what you love about your champs and summoners rift. So moving forward, we're focusing on adding more game modes that hit this goal. Cool. And to that, let's talk about Ultimate Spellbook. First and foremost, you all seem to really love this one. Oh, yeah, it was one of our highest engagement modes ever, second only to Earth. And beyond popularity, we're super happy with how long you spent making oversized champions with Cho'Gath Salt. Oh yeah, and by that I we mean the, the total that. amount of time you spent in Ultimate Spellbook stayed high throughout the event. That gives us confidence that it's worth keeping around. Oh, that yeah. said, there are some clear areas of feedback that we want to address. Junglers were forced to take Smite and another Ultimate, which meant they couldn't choose another Summoner spell. They also missed out on a lot of exciting plays during the laning phase because they were stuck clearing. Oh yeah, plays. huge problem. That was a huge Beyond problem. Beyond that, we also heard that games started to feel a little repetitive due to the small yeah. number of available yeah, ultimates. Yeah, a little boring after a while. I agree. I agree. So this winter, we'll be bringing back Ultimate Spellbook with a bigger alt pool. Oh, cool. We'll also be making some adjustments for junglers to ensure that your experience Thank in Ultimate you. Spellbook oh, is just was as a fun bit as weak everyone that else's. Patch. If Thank you'd you. like to learn more about our approach to game modes, you can check out the dev blog that's coming out. I'll today. do that right after this. That's all we have for today. Thank oh. you so much for watching. We hope you're enjoying Worlds as much as we are. And for any pros watching, once again, please pick a Moo Moo. Let's talk about that final point real quick. 
I mean, is it not shameless? I think Amumu's going, getting, like, shit on at Worlds anyway. But, bro, you're really going to say that after gutting the champion last patch? Because he was strong for one patch? You really you have the audacity to say that. Bro, you doubled his... You, it's 70 mana per charge. He was strong for one patch. I don't know what the fuck the problem is with Amumu. I don't get it. I, they hate the poor fucker. They really do. Dude, he was strong for one patch again, and they comp they tripled his mana cost at all rank, at all ranks, plus lower damage. You could have went without that, Jessica. You could have, you could have held that line. I mean, overall, overall, like the actual changes of preseason, whatever. Uh, it's nowhere near as bad as it was last year. No, and it's not even close. Not even close, bro. So, whatever. I mean, I think that's, dude, I think that's the, the point of all this. I think last year was so, the item rework was so bad that even if a preseason is, is bad, it won't ever be that bad. So people will always say, oh, well, can't be as bad as last year, so I'll take it. Oh, well, can't be as bad as Season 11, so I'll take it. Oh, well, so, yeah, so we're, this, is, this is a bad trend, first of all. That's a bad, but, I mean, it is what it is. This one year, I'll take it. This one year, it's not as bad as last year. I don't really, the, the, chain, the dragon changes I said, all these dragon changes, they were, the dragon changes was one of the best changes. So I will, I'm not going to flame this yet. It was one of the best changes. The item rework. The bounties, I'll give a try. But the bounty system needs fixed a little bit anyway. There needs to be expect like exceptions. Items and runes. Items, we'll see. I didn't really think they were that big. The AP shield is good, I think. The AP shield break is good. Dude, they can revert the items, but obviously they're not going to do that. Ego's big. Uh, I, I was more... Like, pissed off about, like, the the first five minutes of the video where they're just, like, spewing their philosophy and their thoughts behind their items in-game. Like, I would, honestly, it would be, a, a, like, not a bad video if I could just, like, skip, like, this part. Like, right here. If I never watched the first three minutes, I'd be happy. Because it just shows how, stu like, their understanding of the game is fucked up, but whatever. Honestly... Pretty not. I mean, I thought it was gonna be a lot worse. I'll take it, Jessica. I'll take it, Jeremy. Jessica, good to see you. I'll see you next time. I mean, it's not. It's not the items. It's just. That it's. It's like even in the patch notes, when I read the the shit they type, they're just so lost. They're just so lost. They don't still understand. Anyway, I'll take it. Could be way worse. Could be way worse. Minimal's broken rework. You like that? Yeah, like that, like that, like, like, okay, we think all of our champions recently released or re reworked were okay, except for a move, like, except for Mundo. Like, dude, just, like, if they never even said that, I'd be chill. Like, that's so, f what the fuck are you talking about? Mundo was one of the best ones, what are you fucking saying? Oh my god, like, whatever. <laughs> Whatever.